And let me see. I know. I don't know how Mr. Eddie is like really super because I don't even know how to get that back. How do you get a background like that? So he got it going on in just a matter of a couple of weeks. So if you remember your, I want to move this over. Your self-concept is your mental picture of who you are. Now, it starts off with what you think and feel about yourself, the values you hold, how you see yourself acting in certain situations. This is your image seen by you. And then there's going to be another one where we talk about self-esteem and everything, and that's going to be a combination of what other people think about you. And so it's, but this one, it, to have a positive um, and realistic self-concept, it says it helps you to get along with people and solve problems. And that's, that's what I want to really talk about is how do we, what we think about ourselves, how does it cause us to function when we address problems or when, or when we're confronted with conflicts or things that we don't, that we don't like Right. Things that make you uncomfortable. How do you do that? Because also, if you have a negative concept, when you do not get along with others or when you have pr problems, so uh, have trouble solving problems or completing tasks, you may feel negative about yourself, at least for a while. And I want to and I'm it's because I want us to be able to talk about those two things first. Right. Um, one of the things is that if we have this positive self-image and we, I, I, I want to start all the way back being in grade school. Most people don't like to do things they're not good at. So in school, if the teacher is asking us to do something we can't do, go up on the board and solve that math problem or read this or uh, do homework or draw art and we know that we're not good at that we're going to shy away we're not going to want to participate in those things that's just human nature the problem comes in is when we have when it overrides everything else we see about ourselves and it becomes the overarching thing that we see about ourselves all the time that if we if we don't see ourselves able to achieve things now the things that we're good at and the things that we like, we will shine in those areas and we will not shy away from doing those things. Those things that we're not good at, it, it, it'll cause little kids to fight. You know, you told us about that, right? Um, it'll cause them not to want to go to school. Turn into bullies. Turn into bullies. Um, it'll cause them to do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Um Oh, it, it, it's okay, good. so we got a little disagreement. Yes, when if a kid in the, I never liked bullies. You didn't like bullies, but it makes kids, like she said, when people, you don't feel so good about yourself when someone asks you to do something. You, know, you, you probably could, but you don't even want to try, but then you can't try because you're already scared. So when somebody makes fun of you, like you said, when they make fun of you, you would fight them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You wasn't actually a bully. You were just fighting the kid. But in actuality, that is a bully. Because you failed that they was making fun of you, you had to do something about it. No, they were making fun of me, and yeah. that's why I knocked them on their ass. But it, yeah, but instead of sit, talking to them like, hey, man, I can't do it, or I don't know how to do it, can you help me do it? You did, that wasn't the way you solved it. You solved it by fighting, and that is considered a bully. And then the other side of that, too, is is that what it will also do is... Well, kids like to make fun of other kids. It will call... Yeah. Right, and that's what that's I was going to say. What it will do is it will cause kids to take the opportunity... To, to divert attention from what they can't do mm -hmm. to them picking on other kids to try to change the direction of the attention to other children. Right. But you know what? A lot of that shit got to do with the teacher, too. Sure. Yes, one time yes. one time, I had, they had sent me to a foster home, and uh, it, was, it was a ranch, and it had horses, and it was up in the snow, and it was cool. But they said I had to go to school, so. Two weeks in there, they, I went to school. And the first day in the class, I sat in the back and kept my mouth shut. Mm -hmm. 
teacher's mad at the class. He's giving them a lecture, and I'm not really giving it shit because I know I ain't done nothing because I just got there. Then at the end of the thing, he says, you, you all don't want to be dumb like the new kid. Mm. Now, that hurt my feelings. Sure. So I ran out the door, and I went up in the woods a little bit and cried for a minute. Mm -hmm. And then when I got done crying, I picked up a rock about that big, and I came back to bust his head. So I come back to the classroom. He comes out the back because he had the door locked, and I'm banging on it, you know, bring your ass out here. He, I guess he thought I was like one of the metalo punks in there, so I tried to take his head off. And see, this is that's the point, though. See, the point being is that you got a lousy teacher. Well, wait, but but no matter what it is or who it is, it, in your case, it happened to be the teacher. One of the things is is that it, well, if what, a teacher knows you, you don't know math really good at all, mm -hmm. and then want to want you to get up and go to that to that board. That's bullshit. I don't well, care. Well, this is the thing. This is the thing. It may very well be, but this is all the other side of it, though. If the teacher encourages you to do that and say, I'll help you, That's it's true. not even so much what people do. It's the way they do it. That's but different. let me tell you, let me tell you again, the self-concept, and I'm going to tell you this, it would not have hurt as bad or have re uh, caused such a violent reaction from you if you didn't have a self-concept that there was a problem with yourself. which with yourself and this is what happens and and, and it, it it doesn't mean because you and i both know ain't nothing dumb about you okay yeah. now yeah. did you have a learning disability based on a physical a car accident yeah, yeah. that's something totally yeah. different now the teacher didn't know that yeah. but the teacher was ig good. that teacher was ignorant as all get out and right. and that's the truth of the matter that teacher was ignorant mm -hmm. But again, it doesn't, I will tell you, okay, so I, I, you might remember this story. So I was, had been dating a guy, we were, um, and we had broke up and his, but he still wanted to be with me. You busted him in the head? No, I didn't oh, bust okay. him in the head. No, <laughs> Ooh, okay. no, I didn't do that. But this was the thing. So his new girlfriend because he still wanted to be with me. She's trying to figure out. She tells me they arguing all the time about me. Okay. Right. But one of the things was um, she called me a fat, bald head bitch. Now, she thought that that was going to disturb me. And she didn't realize, number one, I'm fat. Okay. <laughs> oh, and I told her, I said, and I'm bald head. I cut my hair off by choice. In fact, right now, most of y'all that know me know my hair is way long in comparison to how I normally wear my hair. I grew this since then, okay? But the point being is that when she called me a fat bald head bitch, she thought I was going to, oh. But in my self-concept, my, my thing is, yeah, I'm fat, but guess what? I'm bald head by choice, and I could fix either of them, but you can't fix your ugly disposition like that. So she thought, so the point being is when she told me that, because of course, now, of course, when she said that to me, of course, my response to her was, but your man still want that. That was what I said to her at the time. Uh-huh. That fat, but he, he still want that, but that's neither here nor there. The point being is this, it didn't make me angry. I didn't want to go get a rock and bust her in the head because I didn't buy into her concept of who I was. Because that's, that's not how you feel about yourself. That's not how I feel about me. I wasn't low-key in agreement with her that I was a fat, bald head bitch. Um, again, the fat, if I'm so concerned about that, do something about it. Um, bald head again, I was doing that by choice. I didn't even have this hair on my head at that time. If she swung at you, you knock her out? Of course. Well, we weren't. She wasn't even close enough to swing. We, she was on but the phone. But I'm asking the question. Of course. Oh well, if you swing at me, then that, that's it. Mm -hmm. All bets are off. You, you know, I told you before. Out. Heck yeah, I told you before. I got fired from one of the most prestigious law firms in the city of Los Angeles that I had been working at for five years because a process server hit me and I hit that heifer back. And again, because guess what? Noreen is still the girl from the projects. Pinky from the projects in Philly. Okay, so <laughs> Pinky from the projects. <laughs> 
and she's still in there. She's still yeah. in there. I try to keep her under the Stretch sewer. I try to keep her under the sewer, and I try not to let everybody see her. I try because I don't because see she does stuff in my body and in my clothes, drive my car mm -hmm. and stuff like that that get me in trouble that might send me to that place. And so I try to avoid her. But anyway, my thing was this: I don't care who you are. You touch me. That's the end. That's that's the line. Okay. That that. Big red line for me. That's where it is. What Miss Pinky have taught me is to stand down, to sit down, so I don't have to sit down and lay down in prison. That's what Miss Noreen told her. Yes, that's what Miss Noreen told God. her. Because yes. Miss no, Pinky, Pinky no Miss Pinky Noreen didn't. Pinky didn't say that. Noreen Pinky would have been like, "Who? Where they at?" Let's go. Who we riding you know, on? Hold my you. shit. Yeah. Okay, cause we gonna. Okay, that was that was Pinky. Fuck your we, ass up. Yeah, we don't we mm -mm, we don't like her. So I know Pinky did tell There's that. No cause Pinky always on some her. bullshit. Yeah. This is why I don't like her ass either. Yeah. I try to keep her away from stuff. Yeah, so yeah, Miss Noreen told me that. Told you stand down mm -hmm. so that you don't have to go sit down mm -hmm. in that place, the place with the people, the people that we don't like. None of them people. Hi, hi, me. She will fuck so, your ass. Yes, up. and, and yeah. he he know I'm a, I'll sock because I had to sock him a couple times no, or two. I'm saying this one. Oh, oh, oh yeah, this, this one too. I'll sock you up in a minute. Listen, okay, and he always talk about how violent we are. We are not violent. We are oh, only violent shit. as only as it is required. That is not our first response to things. That's not what we want. And I'm just saying that. So anyway, again, but my point, shit. let's get back on topic here. <laughs> <laughs> Topic is, the topic is depending <laughs> on how you feel about yourself and your self concept is how you're going to respond when people say things that are not complimentary or they try to put you on the spot or whatever. Even when different things just happen in general, if you don't feel good about yourself and have your own self esteem about yourself build up with you, it will get you in some trouble. It can make you lash out with rocks. It can make you lash out with words because I'm really good. I can get some words together. But, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm good with words. But it will make you do that. But it takes time to build that up. It takes a long time to understand exactly how you feel about you because you're so used to hearing what everybody else tells you about you. That's the problem. And, yes. Well, you know, be honest. Uh, somebody can talk shit to me. I don't have a problem with that. I gotta go tell them again. But Amen. when they put their hands on me or try to put their hands on me, that's a whole get different ball game. That's that's when that jailhouse nut comes out, you know. But I mean, far as standing somewhere and listening somebody cuss at you or you know try to make theirself look big or something like that, I I don't have a problem with that. Seriously, it's it's when they they reach. Mm -hmm. That's that's my breaking point, and I don't care who the hell you are. Uh, that's that's the point that 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 I go back to where I was. As far as somebody cussing or or being an ass, sometimes I just giggle because I'm thinking <laughs> I'm thinking you put your hands on me and I'm on I'm on. I'm show gonna, you different. I'm going to beat you so goddamn bad your mama don't know you. <laughs> and show you something different. I want to open I want to open it up to any, you know, you guys always please feel free at any time to jump in. Um because and 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 have your comments and say um because again, this is for the whole group. Um and in fact, I always and I, for those of you that are kind of new, I want y'all to know, I always like it better when y'all do most of the talking anyway. So, um <laughs> Don't be doing okay. that. Mr. Yeah. I, I like to say, I like to say in 1963, I was 11 years old and I didn't like school. Mm -hmm. I left school in the third grade. Mm -hmm. And it's because I couldn't read, I couldn't write, and I couldn't spell. Mm -hmm. And they was just putting me in one grade after another. So I thought, well, this is not for me. Mm -hmm. And I had to make money for myself. You know, I wore one out one I clothed all my life. And I said, I'm going to make money. I started plucking flowers, cutting lawns, washing dishes, and throwing newspapers to make money for myself. Then when I got to be a teenager, when I got to be 15, 1968, I still had that problem. I couldn't read, I couldn't write, I couldn't spell. And 
me and a young boys in the neighborhood would call me dumb. And that would cause me to fight. That would cause me to be violent. And I, I kept that persona up for so many years until I went to prison in 1987. I started getting educated. Mm -hmm. I got my GED. I did a little bit of college. And so I said to myself, I was never going to let school be the reason that I couldn't do for myself. For mm -hmm. many years, I thought I was a, a victim. But today, I see myself as a victor. And that is why I pursue education now. And I'm 69 years old. And I'm still in school because I think that's going to get me to where I'm trying to go. You know what it does is that it gives you a more positive once you because that was one of the things I wanted to go to is the fact that once you begin, you see yourself achieving things and having success. Like I'm sure the first time that you were able to read a book for yourself, I'm sure you remember that even to this day. I'm sure you remember. I'm sure the first test that you passed, the first written test that you passed, that you had to feel good. And what that does is it encourages you to do more and to see how much further you can go. Because now your self-concept is that, oh, I can do this. You're not dumb. You're not whatever those things are. And so that those things, it's, it's like, uh, like attracts like, and, and it helps and encourages you. Hello. Hey, glad you with us, sweetie. So, All right. Just letting you know. I, I see you. I see that case shining bright. Okay. I see it, Thank baby. You. I know it's happening. I, know, I, I got you. I got you, kid. I know you with me. All right. All right. Uh, so that's uh, Mr. Stephens. Uh -huh. Mr. Stephens. I was like two and a half, three years old or something like that. And uh, I ran across the street and I got hit by a car and my head bounced off the uh, hood and whatever it did, it screwed something up up there. I never could read or write. I still can't read or write. And uh, I was going to school in Compton and uh, I was really having a hard time and they would send a, a Every year they would send some some guy to to test me, and I'd I'd get high high things, you know, because yeah. I wasn't reading. It was blocks and all kind of crap. Mm -hmm. And he said I had a high IQ, and he couldn't understand why I couldn't read. And I told him, Well, I don't know either, you know. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't that I was lazy. It was you know they the class would do ten words a week. He would give me five. I would study with my mom every night, and I would know him tonight, but I wouldn't know him in the morning. And uh, See, they run me through the fourth, fifth, and sixth in two weeks. And the thing of it is, and the thing about that is, is that you're talking about a, at a period of time where um, you talk about a period of time where the notion of you have a brain injury. Yeah. They weren't even talking about stuff like that at that time. No, you, you know what I'm saying? Know. Right. Well, and they didn't even, they didn't even maybe yeah, not, not necessarily even thought about that. It just, they just didn't have the technology or the understanding or the, just, just like they thought you was dumb. They was dumb. They was dumb to it at that time. Yeah, but they, they didn't know they that, that that was a thing. They of understand. course they couldn't understand it, but this is the thing you would, like I said, you and I know there's nothing dumb about you. You no. can, you can do mechanical things as all sorts of things that you're good at. And again, this is why certain things were triggers when you were young, but now that you're older, they're not necessarily right because you've gotten past those things but again these are this is again is mostly related to our self-concept there was nothing going on at that time in our society that explained to him and he couldn't understand it's like um well it's like when i first time i went to juvenile uh-huh and you know i always thought that my mom would have got me out in the first four or five six hours I probably would have never gotten in trouble. Mm -hmm. But after I got in that first fight. And survived. Yeah, without a doubt. But uh, Right. 
then it was okay. I didn't mm -hmm. mind being in there. And I spent a long time in there. I, I spent three years in the hole in there one time. But this is the thing. This is the thing, though. Because I want to I wanna make sure that, that we're understanding that those things fed into, at that time, your self-concept. Not because there was anything necessarily wrong with your intelligence. It was that there wasn't even enough information in the people around you to explain what happened and why you couldn't comprehend and why you couldn't do those things. But it, it, it made you inside feel like shit. Absolutely. Because I was, that's what and I was trying to get to. But what you get ready to do is let me finish what I'm trying to say. Okay. See now he touching me y'all. Okay. We're the, we're the thing. We're the thing. Okay. Here we go. Okay. I'm home. You don't play that. Here, see, see this, this, they want to meet Pinky. They think they want to meet her, but they don't know. They don't really, they don't want to be her. I'm going to just put this right here just in case it become necessary. <sighs> Help me. So. <laughs> See, I told you it was going to be necessary. I'm just saying it's going to be necessary. What I'm trying to say is this. Oftentimes, it, 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 when one of the reasons that I, I, I enjoy Free to Heal and it makes me feel good is because, and that I record it so that other people can hear what we're talking about, is that somebody somewhere that doesn't have the option to come to a group or talk to somebody is feeling the way that we all are discussing, but they feel alone and there's no explanation for it. There's nothing that makes it make sense to them. And that is what destroys the self concept. It is what causes so much pain. It's what causes so much trauma. So when in his time, Back before Hector was a pup, you know what I'm saying? Because he was born in the Stone Ages, okay? The fact that they didn't have all this information to understand now, they even talking about tra traumatic brain injuries from people playing football and things. They wanted to give me and an electric concussion. shock. Did you right. Know that? No. no. I'm serious. And they wanted to give him electric shock, which wasn't going to do yeah, nothing, exactly. but probably make it worse. Yeah, but again, the idea, see, he wouldn't have felt so alone. If even anybody had a way of understanding what it was, what was going that you. was going on and why, that there was really literally a reason why. There was a there was an explanation as to why you could not retain that information. And that would have, and again, this is why <laughs> this forum is so important to me that we get this out, which is why I really appreciate you guys being here. And Mr. Stephens, I really appreciate you talking about your experience because at one point you couldn't, and as, but as you began to, to get involved and to, to get, cause you had to reach out to somebody and say, oh, I can't do this mm -hmm. in order for them at some point to, to begin to, to help you to read and all of those things. You had to put in a lot of effort and a lot of time. But once you were able to succeed at that, now they can't stop you. They can't, they can't stop you from learning and, and, and growing and learning more and, and, and also sharing. Because I tell you, I'm always amazed at the wisdom that, that is so amazing to me. So I appreciate it. And I'm, and I'm grateful. Oh, my gosh. And Michael is still. You know what's screwed? Look, yeah. Michael is being still, y'all. I can see yes. him. He all clear. <laughs> 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 you know, Miss Lorraine, uh, I had to come, come, I had to Wait, come second. out of the shame and guilt ah. and abandonment, you know, ah. and embarrassment, you yeah. know. So for many years, I kept to myself. You know, I was isolated, and just because I didn't know what the other kids knew, mm -hmm. and I felt left out, I felt behind and so i told myself i was gonna try i was gonna try i was gonna try until i succeed and that's what i'm doing today right. and that's just awesome and 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 again every time every time you succeed at something it builds on that foundation and it builds your self-concept up even more because remember i got to go back to sharing the screen because i want to show you guys i want you to have this visual of this right here where somehow your 
there's a, a version of yourself that you would really like to be this person. Mm-hmm. And then there's what you actually are. And there's a gap in there. And understanding how to improve yourself and your self-concept um, is, is what, will, what will help to bridge the two. So these are the ways that people know what you think about yourself. Your physical appearance, um, what you say to others about yourself. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, I'll never be able to do that. Or, oh, I got this. Oh, watch me work. You know what I'm saying? Catch my smoke. All them things. People know how you're feeling about yourself, okay? Your reluctance to, reluctance to try something new because you think you'll fail, okay? A lot of people, again, is human nature to avoid doing things that we're not good at because because we believe that we'll fail at those things and nobody likes to feel like a a failure. So, um, they, they want to talk about your physical appearance, what you, what you say about yourself tells other people about your self concept. Um, again, this is important. Now I want to go back to the physical appearance. Um, I want you to think about this. If you've ever seen somebody and I'm going to stop sharing right here just so we can get the um we can have our folks back on the screen but if you have ever walked down the street or been anywhere and seen somebody walking down the street talking to themselves talking they got an earpiece something (laughs) it's not an ear he didn't let me finish I don't care when I got out and see all these <laughs> people, people talking to their stuff. I thought the whole world went crazy. I'm trying to say they talking to themselves, they doing things, they fighting on each in the air. Somebody tell me what you think that means. Means he's nuts. Okay. They're not in their right mind. Thank you. Okay, now. Now I want you to think about how that person is typically dressed. Think about what they have on. They usually have on. They may have on one shoe, one of one kind of shoe, one of another. Um, the shirt ain't buttoned up the right way. The buttons, one, the the plaid's messing with the flower pants. And the, okay, nothing's going on. The hair ain't combed. All of these things, these things, and what and what it is is an indication of what's going on inside. What you will find is that your physical appearance tends to convey, thank you, convey what you think about yourself and what's going on in your head. So when you see people, I will tell you this, even if you go into a woman's house and you go in there to go date her and everything is chaotic, run. Run. Her chaotic... You know what's to be bothered. Mm-mm. You don't want to be bothered with her because guess what? That chaos that you see in the house, stuff is everywhere. It's what's going on in her life. It is pr- because everything we do, there's a, uh, Derek Rose used to be with the Chicago Bulls. I heard him say his father told him the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Okay, so and guess why? It's because it's all a reflection of how you feel about yourself and what you're doing and what you're going through. So when you, um, and even this one here, he's always neat and orderly and clean. Now he may be crazy, but you know, you know, just a little bit. That ain't what she told me yesterday. She (laughs) said I was dirty. She did (laughs) on the phone. She told me. that's I not exactly that's not exactly what I told him. No. <laughs> no, teeth. see, this is how this is how this is how Jesus. this shit right here is how people go to jail. This is how people this is how people go to This is how people go to prison. Because this is some this is some switcheroo or some no, shit. You let me tell y'all what happened. That. Did let, you let, not say that? I didn't say that. Let me you tell you what I said. That. No. Word what? for word. I'm no. glad your old ass showered. Okay. That now, was your word. Now listen. Now that's what I said. 
I'm glad to know your old butt showers. Yeah. Now, that is not calling him dirty. That is two different things. That is actually on the other end of the spectrum. His old ass fell out the shower and broke my sink in our apartment building <laughs> with his old butt, okay? And, 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 and he fell and, okay, so now he called me and he told me, I said, well, at least I'm glad to know that your old butt is, that you wiped your old butt. Now, that is not telling him that he was dirty. Okay, but you see how he switched that just fast, a little bit? Fast. That's how people go to prison. No, you're not. I ain't playing with him. Well, I told her, I, I said, I might be old, but I'm clean. You know what I mean? <laughs> that was my exact answer to her question. Well, okay. but again, just to, just for the record, y'all, your honor, I'm here to testify. I did yeah, not tell him it. he was dirty yeah. yesterday, okay? Let okay, me just I'm say that, okay? That. Your old ass. I'm yes, I'm glad old old, his old ass, ass took a yes, and I want him to do that every day. I do yeah. every That's day. why we keep the water on in the yeah. building. That's why I pay that high ass eleven thousand dollars a month every month. You know why? So he don't be stinking up the place, okay? We make sure that that's the deal, okay? Just so everybody is clear. But you see how that can happen? Just that one little thing. He switched it just a little bit. No, the truth hurts. Uh 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 uh. No, the truth is, I'm glad that you clean. I'm glad he's not hurt. And I wasn't worried about that. Uh, worried about that sink either. He was worried about that sink. I was worried I, and about he, that sink. And, and, and I offered to pay. And he damage. definitely did. And I told him he don't have to pay for no sink. If any other senior citizen over there hurt themselves, I'm not charging them. So why would I charge him? Hmm, that don't make no sense. Either white. way, uh, he Ooh. said because he white, y'all. Why you throw the I, I want because I'm I'm in a building. Uh huh. <laughs> that, uh -huh. That, that, uh -huh. I've heard. I'm a token. Let me say this. <laughs> we already had a token when his ass got there, and, and her name was Miss Munson, honey. Yeah, but so now we got two tokens. So now we got so now we got one or two, whatever, whatever. The bottom line is this whoever come up and knock on the door and fill out an application, when their name come up on the list, we try to get them housed. And that's just how we get down. But but I I don't know if any of y'all wasn't here the day that he told us that he learned in this group one night what he learned according to him was that he was poor white trash that's what you, when, when you got done that's what i felt like poor white trash. and all i all i could say is oh my gosh is that what you got out of the whole hour i like really and how did you get that that again yeah, there I you go exactly wait how I got wait it wait I'm, you. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a point i'm a point it out it's a self concept. Oh, no. yeah. word, word. Oh, yeah. That's his self concept. Because it surely didn't come from us. Because let me tell you something. We love him. Listen, he no, is no. loved Why don't on. You tell him the truth. He, he is loved on here more than anybody yes, that you were, anybody in the group. Okay. He get more okay, love so and we more attention. Last week that we family. Yeah, your family. Okay. That's, that's, okay, that's, there you have that's it. That's without right. a doubt. Okay. Now, I want to ask... That don't any... mean I can't talk shit. Oh, no, we can say that. Go ahead. We would, no, we... she was talking about, you know, the laws and, and, and the people getting screwed and all that. And, you know, I've been screwed all my life. I, You know, I go to court. I, I went to court on these murder cases. And my lawyer said less than 15 words during my whole trial in Compton. <laughs> oh, and guess what? And guess what? And because his judge was black, he went out there and told everybody all about the black, black judge. Black. <laughs> they called him all kinds of names no, no, and no, carried no, on. No. Listen, this is the thing. Wait, because I don't want to get off on that topic. Okay, I want us to continue to talk about no, I got some concept. listening to when in the bullpen waiting on people to come back gets a bus, and they're all talking about that white son of a bitch <laughs> who gave him that time. And I'm listening to this all the time, and I'm on the white person in the in the block, right? I got a black judge. This son of a bitch sent me down the hole. So when I hit that bullpen, he's goddamn right. He was I, talking a whole bunch of mess, but guess yeah, what? But guess what? Guess what? And here we are, and he survived all of it, okay? He survived all of it. So now, but I also want to get back to how we, how, again, our self-concept is going to tie directly into how we deal with conflict, okay? If I would have we, somebody like you when, when, when I was going to school, mm -hmm. 
and I ain't trying to pump your buttons or nothing. Right. But I'm serious. If I would have had somebody like you that could talk to mm -hmm. and understand like I do, mm -hmm. you know, that's the only reason I come to these meetings. Right. Because I know what comes out of your mouth is the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't I don't have any any bullshit. I don't have to come to these meetings. I'm I've been <laughs> off parole for three years. You know, but well, you know, one of the things I want to say is this too. Um, again, I was born at a time where more information was available, right? So I want to say the people that were there probably did the best they could under under what they knew. Right. And I was born at a time where more information, you know, I feel like being born in 1964 was like, uh, it, 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 the, the timing was perfect because so many things, I, I'm probably one of the only generation of people that went through all these various technologies. I was there for the eight track tape, the cassette, the CD, the MP3. I, I was alive for all of that. You see what I'm saying? And, oh, and let's not forget the vinyl. Don't play the record. You see what I'm saying? Don't forget the vinyl. You know what I'm saying? Scratching them. You know what I'm saying? So the thing, so the thing of it is, is that um, again, I was, I had the benefit in my lifetime to see all these technologies, and we learn more. And so yes, and then also having my mother, um, in 1955, went to go work um, for AT and T. And so that put her in a mixed race environment at work. And that meant that she took us in mixed race environments. Some of her friends were white, you know, or whatever. And so we got to go a lot of places. So I wasn't pigeonholed into just one thing. There are people that I grew up with in the projects that are raising their kids in the projects and their grandkids in the projects, right? Generation after generation after generation. And a lot of their self-concept is that, that the world is only this big. It's only that little the miles right around right around the projects that we grew up in. So that's why I encourage um, young people but to go away to go to college. Those are things that I learned from having the experience, but those experiences weren't always available and they weren't right. necessarily yeah, available. Right. And that information wasn't available yeah. when you were young. No, my mother, my mother was, uh, my mother would kick your, your goddamn ass and stick soap down your mouth. If, if, if I would have called somebody a nigger or, mm -hmm. or spick or, or something like that, think she wouldn't whoop my ass. She she tear that ass up like it was coming out of. But and see, this is the thing. That's because she was a good person. She gave you as much information as she had at the time. She knew that there wasn't there was something wrong about those things, and she taught you what she knew at that time. That's what I'm saying. When you say, because I think my mother was. Um, she was extraordinary in the sense that, like Mr. Stephens, she didn't grow up with her parents. Her mom died. She was three years old. And my grandfather left her with her grandparents and moved back to L.A. So guess what? She grew up all that time, but was she, she was an extraordinary parent. And there were things that she did, for example, very rarely did my mother say, no, you couldn't do something. You know what would make Wait, me Wait, one hateful? second. Wait, one second. My mother would say... If I said, Mom, I want to do this, or can I do this? She would say, okay, well, did you think about this? Because if it was me, I would be asking this question. Or if it was me, I would be thinking about this thing or that thing. And so if she didn't tell me no, because there were a few times she said no. But if she said, I would be thinking about that, and I went ahead and did it, and all of those things that she didn't think were good things came to pass, I had to eat it. Mm -hmm. She wasn't bailing me out. That was teaching me consequences of my behavior. If, if it worked out good, so be it. Good for you, right? But it, it taught me as a young person to make decisions and choices for my life. And it also built my self-confidence in my ability to make decisions, 
right? My self-concept became, oh no, you could decide for yourself. A lot of parents today are helicopter parents and they're hovering over their kids and making all the decisions. They're dominating them and thinking that they're doing them some good. And then they just expect that miraculously at 18, they're going to know how to make decisions. No, that's not so. And they call you on the phone. How do you make tuna? How do you make? Okay. See, by 18, you should already know how to make tuna. If you like to eat tuna by 18, you should already know how to do that. Shit, I call home that ass out of boil water. Okay, but listen, this is the thing. Because somebody has to give us the opportunity to learn how to do those things. And our self-concept will limit uh, what we will attempt. Remember from from the slide, it said... Some people will avoid, if they have a negative self-concept, they will try to avoid trying new things because they don't want to fail at it. Right. So it's important for us to always pay attention to what we think about ourselves. It's the one thing that I like most about uh, the book, The Four Agreements, because when it talked about being impeccable with your word, it wasn't just what I might tell you I'm going to do on your behalf, but it was impeccable with my word that I tell myself about myself. And that is where the most progress can be made in any of the things that we do. What time is it? So, hey, can I say five minutes. what'd you say? It's me, Jaime. Can I hey. say something? When you talked about like like people are afraid to uh, make progress or something like that, mm-hmm. I was talking about it, it, it's really, well, that, I mean that too, but it's also uh, the fact that people just don't like change. Yeah. Oh, that's a big one, then it, Jaime. So, real. so, 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 because of that, you know, people, people do everything they can to stay where they're at. You know what I mean? So, justify why that's okay. When even, even if that's not a good place, Jaime. For example, even if it's wrong, even if it's wrong, right? Even if it's a domestic violence situation, if they grew up that way, they'll stay in it because it's familiar. They know how to how to survive in that dysfunction right there. They could just they can justify it in another situation. If my parents were violent to each other and I get in a violent situation, now I can justify that to myself that it's okay that this is normal or eat or whatever it is. At least I know how to function in that place. And that's such a good point because people don't like change. They don't like change. They don't want to come outside of their comfort zone, but nothing great ever happened in your comfort zone. Nothing great. No great changes. No, no progress uh, progress ever happened from the place that you've always been. If you keep doing the same thing that you've always been doing, you're going to continue to get what you always got. It's not going to change. You're not going to get anything other than that. And that's such well, a valid some, point. Some people don't want nothing else. And that's what he, that's yeah. his point is that pe- some people don't want to change. They just want to stay in the condition <laughs> and in, in the circumstance because they're afraid to move. They don't even and want to makes, try it something else. Yes. Makes feel good because when well, a person that want to change, they can function. You don't, you have, you, you have a different feeling. So if I can stay right here where I feel okay, I'm gonna stay right here. Right. And if I have to change, that makes me feel a different way. Because now, because also now I'm scared of what I might feel. Mm-hmm. A lot of times it's the unknown in change that people don't like. Is I don't know what that's like over there. Right. I don't, I don't know what it's like to live in a different place. I know this grocery store. I know they got what I want here. I know, right. I know which aisles. I know. Yeah, see, the people know me. You know, I want to go where everybody know my name. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, so that, that notion of change. Yeah, that, and that's my, say it again. that's my point. Yeah, that's my point. Because it's like, you know, people, it, it, it's hard for individuals. I know it was hard for me to, to have... Uh, come to a peace force that change is needed you know what i mean yeah. and it's hard to come to that terms you know like sometimes in all these years in prison you know i would live with a celly and i knew this dude was no good but right. you know what but you know what i didn't yeah, i'd rather stay because i was stupid at that time i'd rather stay in that environment mm-hmm. right because i already knew where that person was coming from so i knew how to maneuver around that so i accepted that Rather than just getting out of that into another environment where where the where the grass is actually would have been greener, 
and you didn't you even know, know, but you didn't you know. know you weren't willing uh, to take that chance because at least this circumstance, you knew what this was. And again, uh, you knew how to function in that particular environment. But uh, to try to go into something you don't know becomes a challenge because again, that change, see, because it were, what was it going to require of you? Right. It's not even maybe so much about what the other person was as much as what will the new circumstance require of you? I think it was that fear factor and that unknown. Yes, the unknown for sure. Yeah. For sure. Absolutely hey, for sure. Going back to that fear factor uh, and the unknown. Excuse me, Ms. Norton. Yes. Yeah. That's that's what you call comfort zones. Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. You know, it's a comfort zone. So yeah. you stay in. Wait one second, hi mate. Wait one second, hi Yeah, and it, and, it, and it really. Wait, go ahead, Michael. No, I was saying it's called a comfort zone. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, comfort zones are things that stagnate us, that keep us down, keep us from succeeding or keep us from uh, uh, reaching our greatness because we get so comfortable in it that even though something else is greater, we we rather be comfortable. Yeah. It's like, like, it's like older okay. guys like myself. I like for me, it wasn't comfortable. Clothes because they comfortable. Instead what of wearing it, and and what it is is it, you know what and I hear what you're saying Jaime that it wasn't come it was familiar you knew it you knew what to do there so it is the same knew what was, for, right for me what how to function right there and me, I knew what was coming I rather know what's coming than than not know what's coming absolutely you know what I mean? at least I know unknown. how to maneuver around it. Or, or or know what to do to deal with it. It was it was really it wasn't that I was comfortable. I was actually uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But the fact was, I knew how to maneuver around it. So therefore, I felt more comfortable staying in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It and was really, it, really, listen, it was listen really, what you said though, because it's the same thing. It's the semantic of the word of it. Because but but it is, it is a definite and nuance to what you just said. But like you said, it was it was you you knew it was familiar to you and you felt comfortable being there. So there's the and that's why it's the comfort zone. It and why it, as to what Michael's saying, the thing is is that it was familiar. Like I say, even if it's not pleasing or it's not necessarily oh. what you wanted it to be, none of those things. It's not mm. like to say I liked it, but I know uh, I was just more confident in that environment. Than I would have been in the unknown. Is Absolutely, better said because you knew what to do there. You knew that in this environment, if A happens and B happens, I need to do C. You knew you knew the rules. Yeah. You knew the rules to the road right there. <laughs> and when you know when you know it, then it is familiar. And yeah. at some level, there is a comfort in knowing that you can function. I know what to do here. I know yeah. what to do here. What I'm not sure about is if I, I go over I, there. I can see that aspect of it. You know, yeah. I can see that aspect and, and what of you it. didn't know yeah. was if I if I go to this new place, to a new cell with somebody that I'm not familiar with, I go to a new dorm or whatever, a new building, and they function totally different over there or whatever they're doing over there, I don't even know what that is, and I don't know how I'm going to react. I don't know. I don't want to learn a brand new environment. And this is what happens a lot of times in so many instances with people is because we're afraid of what we don't know. And it causes us to just sit back and accept whatever it is. That's what we do. Yeah. With ourselves. And it, even it, it's, it's also not good for us. It's, yeah, it's, even, it's also a denial pattern, you know, which was avoidance. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, because it, you can avoid having to grow. You can avoid having to change. It goes back to what you the first thing you said, the change. I don't want to make the change. Listen, change is hard. Okay, change is hard. Changing your behavior, changing your, your self-concept, that is the most difficult, is to change how you think about yourself because that's going to propel you to change your surroundings. I'll put it to you like this. People who got high, if they did... Uh, if they were alcoholics or if they did drugs of any kind, if it was crack, cocaine, meth, whatever, there's a certain environment and a certain circle of friends that you hang out with, certain places you go, 
because you know that they're doing what you want to be doing. When you get clean, you only want to go in the places. If you go in those places, you're going to be like, is this what we look like? Is this what we doing up in here? It's not even fun. It's not even inviting. It's not engaging. And it's like, uh, so anytime, so like this, I'll tell you this. If somebody ever tell me, oh no, I don't, I don't get high. I just hang out at the crack house. I'm like, mm, no, I'm calling bullshit. I'm calling the flag. That's the 15 yard penalty variety. Uh -uh. You know what I'm saying? Cause that, that's just not, that's just not what people do. That's not what people do. Right. Look, listen, it don't matter. Whatever it is, what, whatever you're looking for, whatever whatever's going yeah, on, you, you looking, looking for something there. You don't have to go to that kind of place yeah, to find a hooker. I know, but they I, out on the street. You ain't got to hang out in the crack house to go get one of them. Okay? <laughs> Bottom line is, there's too many places to get them that you don't have to go to that environment. And look, I, I would be afraid that somebody was going to beat me up or something. And, you know what I'm saying? Sitting in them kind of environments. You know, take my money. Something I, you know, I, I, I'm not comfortable right, in that. Yeah. Not to mention the fact that in them kind of places, they dirty and they stinky. Now they dirty. And it's time. You know what I'm saying? They dirty and they stinky and it's just not good. So I want to give everybody, and, and I see we got a, a new gentleman here. And I want to say hello, Mr. Robert. I saw that if that is your name, if that's your phone. I just want to welcome you um, to Free to Heal right here. We talk about relationships. We talk about a lot of stuff. But the most important relationship we ever going to talk about here is the relationship you have with yourself. And so I just want to welcome you. Hopefully next time you can get here a little bit earlier, because if you're not logged on by like 620, I can't give you credit for, for the attendance for that particular day. So that's just something for you to know. I will note that you did log on tonight. Um, and I thank you for being here. But I want to give, Mr. Hall, I want to start with you. Any any final comments or thoughts? Uh, yeah, I just want to say that um, what's important to self-confidence and something we really didn't speak about is self-awareness and self-knowledge. Yeah. Because we need both of those things in order for us to understand we're self uh, 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 we, uh, the concept. Yeah, uh, yeah. you gotta even we, know what your uh, self concept is. You're absolutely right. Exactly. It's like AA wow. will tell you, you exactly. first gotta acknowledge that you got a problem right. and that, and that, and that it, your life is unmanageable. In exactly. order, to, that's like half the battle, right? So you're exactly. absolutely right. You gotta be aware. You gotta be aware that you're old and stinky. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Just a thought. Just, I, just an example. And I almost said something too. <laughs> Absolutely right. Uh, but, Mr. Kit, was, were you finished? I'm sorry, sweetie, were you finished? I wanted to say one other thing. When mm -hmm. we were talking about the comfort zones, mm -hmm. that's how you get stuck in them. If you're not right. aware of the comfort zone, you can't get up out of it. You know what right. I'm saying? So that's how I do Because I know how to be here. I know Stop. how to be here. You're absolutely right. That is very valid. Kit, can you unmute and talk to me? Because y'all know we play this game with him every time. Kittridge. Kittridge. All right, we're going to go. Hi, ma'am. I'm going to ask you to go ahead. Any final comments? Yeah, thank you. And you know what? I appreciate the, the, the topic on self-concept. You know, it, it's a real deep, uh, uh, topic, honestly, um, um, it's something that, um, that I help, I try to help individuals understand, um, in, in even in CGA, because, um, self concept has a lot to do with change, um, and, uh, and, and motivational interviewing where, where you understand where your change is at. Mm -hmm. Um, so my whole thing with, with the self concept is that, is that, um, you know, like these false beliefs that I had of myself many years ago, you know, like how that, you know, the, the, you know, that's how my self concept of what I believed I was and how I wanted to portray myself as an individual, mm -hmm. I, you know, back then I projected it. That's what came out. You yeah. know what I mean, you know, and, and, and that's the way that I wanted the world to see me. So therefore that's how I, I, I fed off that and continue this cycle of, of violence and or, or whatever you may call it or criminality um just to just because you know i had lacked insecurity you know yeah. but it, today like i because i understand that self-concept you know of of how i got there you know that helped me understand what i really want to be like today 
So the self-concept to me has changed because I don't want to be viewed that way. I don't want to be viewed as a criminal. I don't want to be viewed as a violent person. So therefore, I, you know, all those false beliefs and values and traditions that I used to live by, I, I destroyed them. I, I got rid of them because I know they're unhealthy for me. And then not only that, destroying a lot of people's lives in that process. So therefore, that self cotton So the way I project myself in the world today is totally different. You know, like, you know, like I, I'm more of a listener. I'm more kind. I'm more understanding. You know, do I, you know, I'm a human being. That doesn't mean I, I don't struggle with certain things or certain people, you know, but I'm just, but in the day, you know, like, you know, I, that self concept of who I want to be today, you know, is a reminder to me that, okay, look, that's not what I want to be. I need to get back over here. You know what I mean? Mm. And because I understand what self concept really, really means, how I want to project myself out into the world. And, and you know what's good about what you're saying is, I promise you, in my head, what I'm visualizing are those circles merging. I'm, I'm, I'm visualizing them circles coming together, your ideal self versus what you were actually. And I'm visualizing them coming together into that one thing at the same time. So now it's all so that you're headed toward where you are. And if nothing else, if it's not totally the ideal, because let's face it, none of us are ever going to be exactly what we always, you know, what we envision ourselves to be, but it's as close to that as possible. And that's from doing the work on yourself, which is powerful, awesome, and wonderful. And so I really thank you. I'm always so glad when you're here because I always get such good, good uh, stuff out of you. I like that. I, like I appreciate it. Thank Thanks you for being here, Mr. Eddie. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm conflicted about this topic of, of self concept because it's a difficult topic for me. Mm -hmm. um, like a lot of people, experiences in my early life led me to internalize like a really, really negative view of myself. Mm -hmm. And one thing I've noticed as I've uh, matured into adulthood is that my response to that was, well, what can I do to compensate? Essentially, I didn't think of it that way when I was younger. And, right. uh, but it became a thing of what can I do? Uh, what can I excel at? And I turned to academics mm -hmm. and these types of things over the years. And I still do, to be frank, but I've, I've really learned in recent years that there's, there's a difference between what I do and who I am. Ah. And I, you know, and I could do all these different things and continue to build and build and build on, with all these external things, but um, not digging deeper, so to speak, and, and, and working on who I am or even discovering who I am. Um, all those problems will just, they just surface. It doesn't actually change anything. I can, like I said, I can accomplish whatever I want. I can get as many degrees as I want. I can do whatever, but, but, it, but at the end of the day, when I'm by myself and I'm just sitting there, uh, I still will have those other feelings about my, my self-concept, about myself uh, surface. And uh, I don't make any claims to have have moved beyond that in my life. If, if I'm going to speak straightforwardly about that, that's something I still struggle with because I still focus. Even right now, what I've been doing since I've been out is uh, charting my, my, my course to continue college and things like this. And it's, as opposed to like, well, wait, let me just stop for a second and ask myself, like, who am I? Yeah. In general, and who am I right now as I That's transition right. back to society? What kind of a person am I going to be? Not, you know, what am I going to do? Um, so that's why I enjoy this group because it's it's bringing me back to like, yeah, Eddie, you, you know, you you gotta you gotta look at who are you going to be. And who you know what you? we talked about it briefly last week that identity crisis that I told you that I know that when people come home, there's that identity crisis that happens. Who am I now? And and it also ties back into something that Michael said about you got to be aware, right? First of all, you got to discover. And I'm going to tell you, the more time you spend now on discovering who you really are versus what you might have been told you were or what you thought you were or what was projected onto you that may not be real and realizing First of all, you survived how many years? Uh, 17. Okay. That, you, you a hell of a dude. Let me just say that, okay? That feat alone and by itself is a heck of a thing. So a there is, a, there is a wonderful person inside of you and a strong person. So just know that for sure, right? But again, you got to discover what's real and figure out what was projected onto you that's not real 
and take those layers off. And you're absolutely right. Unless and until you do that, it doesn't matter how many degrees you get. It doesn't matter how much money you make. It doesn't matter how what kind of car you drive. You will still be whatever. If let me say it like this: if it's if it's a ball of confusion, then you still you just a ball of confusion with degrees, oh, money, there. and a car and a, and a big pretty house and a beautiful woman trophy wife on your hand with two point five kids. But you still that ball of confusion. If you start to peel that layer back and find out the beautiful diamond that's in there, then you're a diamond with all of those things, and then you can maintain those things. Because the other danger in not identifying and pulling those layers back is that you would at some point self destruct. Because that ball of confusion is, is bound is bound to pop. Okay, it's going to erupt at some point. So you got to get to it now while you got the chance. And and look, hopefully coming here will help you to do that. Because honestly, um, for me, the hardest lesson I ever had to learn and the hardest day in my life was looking at myself in the mirror and acknowledging that. The pain that I was in, which I had been in for a very long period of time, to the point that I thought I just wanted to lose my mind and go crazy, it was my response to the pain, was my fault. And part of it had to do with what I thought about myself. So that day, but guess what happened the next day? It was the beginning of the rest of my fucking life, man. And I was able to start to grow and nobody's ever, no circumstance has ever been able to put me back in that situation ever, ever again. Nothing has ever happened from that day to this day. And guess what? I've lost both of my parents. I lost my oldest brother. Um, I've had failed relationships. Um, I was raped during that time. All, all of these things. But nothing Nothing has ever hurt me that deep again. And, and I also have not self imploded or destroyed the things that I have been able to build because that was sitting in there bubbling. Cause it's like just putting it up under here and it's just growing. It's, it's, it's growing. And so I encourage you strongly spend some time on that, on that dude right there. Spend some time on that dude so that all of the other work that you put in to make your life better doesn't get derailed because underneath of it all, you're still hurt, wounded, and don't think <clears throat> above all else that you deserve the things that you have accomplished. Because a lot of times what it is, is people put things on us to make us feel like we're not deserving. And you deserve everything. And you deserve every great thing that there is in this life to, to, and to offer. And because apparently you're not um, you don't have an, um, an aversion to working for it. You clearly are not, if you, you know, educated yourself and uh, um, succeeded in academics, you had to study and all those things. So you're not, it's not like you're not willing to work for it. It's just a matter that, um, you got to make sure that you know, you deserve it and that you can maintain it. And the only way to be able yourself. to do that is Stop to be scared of himself. Don't be scared. Don't be scared of Eddie. Yeah, don't be scared because Eddie is all right. When you get start pulling them layers back, Eddie's all right and underneath the there. I'm telling y'all, trust me. I'm a, I'm a good judge. I, I can feel it. It's good stuff over there, Big Ed. Thank you. You got Thank it. You. you got it. Exactly. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Stephens. Yes. Uh, this concept of self is such a, a, a powerful uh, subject because you know for so many years I carried this darkness on the inside this hole of uh, emptiness you know I've committed mayhem on myself and mayhem on society and I thought society owed me something mm -hmm. because there was nobody to turn to there was nobody to tell me that everything was going to be all right there was nobody to tell me I love you until I went to prison I had to understand why my emotion was so eradicated, why my feelings were so dark and deep. And so when I started understanding how I felt, what was going on inside of me, then I was able to put things in its place, you know, like understanding love and care. For a long time, I walked around not caring about what I did to myself. You know, I did drugs for 34 years. And every time I did drugs, it was going to jail. Every yeah. time I did drugs, it was going to jail. Yeah. 
And so I had to stop and think, what made me do the things that I did? And then when I started looking at what was going on on the inside, what was happening on the inside? What was I liking? And you know, I've told you my story many times before that there was nobody to turn to. There was nobody in my corner. So I grew up in the world, in the world. And so, you know, I thought God was not for real until he showed himself uh, 20 weeks ago on May the 5th. Words was coming out of my mouth to the board that I didn't even know I was saying. That come, uh, the gave them people confident to give me another chance, that I was worth another chance. And so that's why I go so much to be a good person, a good human being, a decent person, a person that's for real, a person that knows what he wants and knows how to go out and get it. That's awesome. You know, one of the things I want, I want to point out is, is that the good person that you want to be had to be in there for you to pull it out. You stop being afraid. I just want you to know that. You can't, you, listen, you stop being afraid. I would love to have $5,000 in my purse right now, but I don't. <laughs> yeah. So if you've been able to pull out kindness and a good person and a gentle spirit, it was always in there. It was just covered up by all of the darkness and all of that misconception about who you are. And so just know that um, it was, and it was covered, like you say, like you say, covered up with anger, covered up with frustration. You did the drugs to escape because you didn't understand what was going on. How did I wind up here? How could you understand anything like that? You're too young to understand. And then, you know, we talked about it before. People in our generation, they didn't talk about stuff yeah, like that. They did not with no kids. Wasn't nobody trying to explain what you was experiencing and why you was feeling like you was feeling and why you felt abandoned, abandonment issues. They didn't start talking about that shit till recently. <laughs> abandonment <laughs> issues. What was that? And talking about our feelings. No, uh-uh. no, they didn't do that. Going through their issues as well. So they right. Help you in the first place. Right. They that couldn't help wild. themselves. They couldn't help, yeah, they couldn't help. Yeah. They couldn't help themselves, and all they could do was do what they could do. Hey, Kit, are you? Uh oh, you unmuted. Go ahead, Kit. I, 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 I'm right here. I'm right here. Talk and to I, me. I, I, I just listen and I listen and I listen. And I know for a fact, we all self-medicated ourselves with alcohol and weed. And some, some people went further than that. But the pain that we suffered, we tried, We were told to suffer in quiet. Yeah. Go to the corner and do whatever the hell you want to do, but don't bother us. Yep. We don't give a damn what, what, what the problem is with you. Mm -hmm. Just don't bother us. Right. You want to drink a beer? Drink a beer. You want to smoke some weed? Smoke some weed. This is the time of love, happiness, and peace. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel none of that love, happiness, and peace. Mm -hmm. All I felt was hate. Mm -hmm. Why are you doing me like this? Yeah. Why do they got pretty cars and I ain't got a pretty car? Why they got money in their pockets and I ain't got none? Till I finally got enough sense to go get my own. Stop struggling. Get out there and get your own. Then when you got your own, then you have peace of mind. Mm -hmm. That's how you got your own peace of mind because you got to, you got out there and got your own thing. Depending on how you got it. Right. Hold Depending it. on how you got it. it. If you got hold it, hold it, hold you got it hold in hold a productive hold way. It. I'm out the ghetto. I'm off the east side of Los Angeles. I'm out the low bottoms. However, I got it. That was my thing. I but had, at that time, I at that time but guess what, dude? Guess what, dude? It sent you to the penitentiary, too. So I'm just saying, it it we're we, it we about to be in 100 over here. Because, look, it, yeah, you could. It, 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 it didn't just send me to the penitentiary. It sent me all the way to death row. <laughs> okay. See? See? Okay. And I'm sure that wasn't, that wasn't peaceful. If I don't get no appeal and come off them shelves and come back down with life without the possibility of parole, I wouldn't be here today. Mm -hmm. if I don't, uh, but see, that's part of fighting. I learned to fight. Fight. Never give up. Never give up. I didn't even know what a rid of Havis Corpus was. Well, I'm glad you found out what it was, kid. I'm glad you found out what it was. Mr. Robert, I want to see if you have anything in, in the time that you've been listening, anything you, any comments you want to make? Okay. 
Richard. It looks like it's Richard. Oh, Richard. I'm sorry, Richard. Mr. Rich Richard. Is there anything you want to say? Anything you heard that makes you want to comment? Thank you uh, for that, um, Mr. Eddie, because, okay, I but I'm, I, I thought it said Robert. Okay, but now we're going to talk to this Robert. Any any comments, any final things you want to say? I'm on surpriser. I hope that, that y'all who come to this meeting comes because you want to, not because sister makes you do a meeting or something. Because if, if if you stick with this, I swear to God that it will change you. And I mean it will it will change your heart. And that that's the truth. But if you just come in because she's requiring you to do an hour class a week, shut the damn thing off. Mm -hmm. Hey, can I can I answer that? Can I answer that real quick? Yes. Hey, uh I appreciate you saying that. You know, one one of the reasons why, because like my, you know, like I've been taking self help classes for like over fifteen years, and for me, like I feel like I have to relive a bunch of stuff, and it, it becomes a trigger for me today. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like I, part of me is like, when is when is it gonna stop? It, it it really doesn't. You know what I mean? And sometimes you know, like I feel like I'm forced into things I do not want to do, like this class, for an example. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, you know, like my intentions coming into it wasn't really because. I wanted the class or because I need the class, um, which, you know, that's just wrong thinking. But in reality, it's like, you know, like, um, you know, like I'm glad I take this class because this is one of my favorite classes. You know what I mean? Probably the only class I really like being in, honestly. Um, um, I'm kind of sick of AANA. I'm sick of CGA. I'm sick of anger management. I'm sick of a lot of stuff, man, you know, but this class right here is like different for me. You know, like it, you know, because I don't like to relive shit. I don't want to relive shit for the rest of my life. At some point, I want it to be done. You know what I mean? But I'm forced to do this shit. Um, and, uh, and uh, you know, I was really angry, you know, that I had to do this class. You know what I mean? Or one class during the week. I was I was really pissed off about that. Yeah, that's what so, it requires. Yeah, and, 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 and for me, it has always been easy for me to avoid this and to go do what I know best. Right? And, and that's how serious it has become for me lately. It's like, damn, man, am I still doing? I'm still doing the damn class. Are you serious? Like, when does it stop? Why do I gotta keep reliving my life over and over again? Why can't I have peace? And and I understood that, you know, like my attitude had a lot to do with it. You know, I was really ang angry at Sister Teresa for that, but at the same time, I'm actually kind of grateful for it because I wouldn't I wouldn't have the joy that I have for this class. You know what I mean? And that's just awesome. And I'm gonna tell y'all something. Um. And that's all I want to say about that. It is um, an honor for me and a blessing that you guys feel that way. What I will say is I think one of the things about this group that's different is uh, we can laugh. Um, you guys know I'm no different than y'all. This is the 100 zone up in here. If it, No matter how good, bad, or ugly it is, if it make me look bad, oh, well, yeah, it is what it is. Life. We yeah, not it is. It's real life. And the other thing is we can always improve because I'm going to tell you something. I learn and grow as much as you guys do. Um, I have gotten as much out of uh, having groups with the Francisco Homes as I have given. Um, the reason that I do, again, Free to Heal is to make sure that people who um, may not otherwise have a chance, that they have something they can listen to as somebody that understands what they're going through. And that is what's important. And so, yes, Jaime, it is unfortunately an ongoing process, that self-development and all of that. But I do understand, I had a lady, and I think this might even express how you feel. She's deceased now but she said to me at one point she said um i'm no longer um a recovering addict she said i have recovered she was like no i have recovered because she was tired she felt like at some point she needed it needed to be an end to it as well and that's how she felt and she was like no i'm not i'm not still an addict she's like i'm over she's not been, I, she's not been clean and sober for over 30 some odd years and she was like so so i i kind of empathize and understand a little bit of what you mean when you say like you just tired of the same things over and over and over again and all of that but know this that 
whatever you are being required to do that when when it's enough and i'm talking about from a spiritual standpoint when it's over it'll be over Okay, you'll be able to move on from it and you won't have to do that. But you, what you will find out is that you will always be re, re, reiterating those same principles to yourself. You're going to talk those principles to yourself over and over and over and over again. One of the things that I like about facilitating is it requires me to keep those principles up here. I got to keep them right in front of me because I would feel like a hypocrite if I'm telling you guys to be one way. And I don't live those things. So it always helps me. It's like an accountability thing. No, I want to it, document that you hit me with this. Okay. <laughs> it's an accountability thing. It makes me, it keeps me uh, on ground, like you said, get grounded. grounded and, it, and it holds me accountable, which is great because it also prevents me from losing sight of those things that keep me at peace in my life. One of the things I guard, I don't care who it is. I'm going to guard my peace of mind with everything I got. I told you guys oh, yeah. earlier that I went through some things. I was in so much pain that I looked at insanity and I thought it would be better to just check out than it would to continue to try to fight this pain that I'm feeling. And once I came on the other side of that and got my peace of mind back, I will never let anybody, I don't care who it is, I love my son and my grandchildren with everything I got, but I was willing to walk away from their asses too to protect my peace of mind, okay? Because that's not available as a sacrifice for no relationship. My peace of mind, because guess what? If my peace of mind is not there, it may also lead to me doing crazy things, okay? And that's the thing. So I want to give you an opportunity. Any last comments for you? Tonight's less, I mean, tonight's conversation was a very eye opener. And I love to hear everybody. Like, I love to hear things that everybody's been through. And I always share things I have been through, but I appreciate the class again tonight. Thank you. And so um, that's free to heal you guys for this for this week right here. Catch us again on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all the platforms. Leave us comments if you want uh, us to talk about certain things. Let us know. See you guys Bye. next week. See y'all next week.